You're on RT1 in a new series, The Transformative Power of Love and the story of one woman's impact on the lives of others. Would you believe? I must have been always talking about having a, a green field, a home and a family. We're here to learn how to live a day doing each simple thing that comes the way as best we can. For over 50 years, Sister Concilio Fitzgerald has worked miracles by helping tens of thousands of people with addictions turn their lives around. From the very start, she just, she does get under your skin. <laughs> I know that I let everybody around me down. And the pain that that can cause, you can't describe the pain. Once we come to accept something, uh, the pain has gone out of it. Who is this little nun from County Kerry? And what is it about her that enables people to transform their lives? Sister Concilio is an enigma. She's one of those people that you meet that you can't really put words to who they are. You look into that person's eyes. I can't explain it. It feels sometimes now, don't take this the wrong way. It feels sometimes she's looking straight into your soul. anniversary of Kunwera, set up by, and I know she doesn't like me to say this, but she is a living saint, Sister Concilio. I taught the morning I was joining the nose, which was the end of my whole life, and I couldn't stop crying. I just thought everything had ended and that there'd be no more living for me. I thought nuns were lonely people looking out the window, wondering would somebody call to see them. So what were you doing joining the nuns? I don't rightly know. <laughs> my brother Johnny saw me cry my heart out. He said, I'll come home, what did that, he said. And I said, no, Johnny, I have to go, but I'll come home at Christmas when I have my conscience satisfied. That's what I said to him. So you didn't think you were going to last, did you? No. I know for certain I was very happy as a child. My mother and father got up early every morning. The cows had to be milked and the meat brought the creamery for a certain time. But everyone got up and got on with it because my parents did. We learned through their example, you know, and that I suppose why our motto in Coonver is don't tell me, show me. They showed us how to do things. If it was just about me, I'd take my chances and I'd go farming and I'd do the best I could to save my soul. But there are an awful lot of other people to be thought of. That's what brought me life. It all began in an old dairy behind what was the Mercy Convent in Athai, County Kildare. Then, 50 years ago, Sister Concilio bought a farm up the road and it became Coon Wirra, the harbour of Mary. Since then, she has built houses and centres all over Ireland to treat people with addictions. Not everyone manages to recover. Today, on any given night, over 600 people avail of the services of Coonwira all over the country. The secret to its success is Sister Concilio and her simple spirituality. Now at 80, she's still working and more determined than ever that Coonwira 
and that spirituality will continue into the future. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Since it's Monday morning, I suppose we'll have a look back and see uh, where we're coming from since last week and since we came in. Yeah, I was suicidal before I came in. I was in a bad way. I'd, I'd lost all my weight. I'd, you know, I was at that store. I'd lost absolutely every partner and a child. It was my own doing, do you know what I mean? But it was so confusing because I loved them so much, but I still couldn't do it for them. I came to realise that it has to be for me, it has to be for my heart. The acceptance is so powerful, you know, and it's the first step. I was in the convent in Natai. It was there you began to come across the, what they call the road men or the men of the road. That's right. I felt they were lost. You know, they were. A lot of them were young people, and they were going from county home to county home with a bottle of wine in their pocket. Sister Concilio, a sister of mercy. And her mercy is understanding alcoholics, or any dropout. I went down to them at night and sat by the fire with them times when everyone was going to bed. And how did the Mother Superior respond to this? Not the place for a nun to be, really. Well... Sure, she was going to bed, I suppose. So I got to know them, and I got close to them, like. And uh, I thought of myself someday, somewhere, somehow, I'd have a place these lads can call home. Because I thought if they could have a place to call home and go out in the morning to do a day's work and come home at night to a fire and a meal, and someone to love them, someone to welcome them home, I thought I'd welcome them home. So they started coming in. People who had jobs and homes and families and businesses. What could I do but do the best I could to entertain them, sit down and listen to them? I knew nothing about addiction. <laughs> but, but when did you start learning about addiction then? And what did you do? They taught me everything I ever needed to know about addiction. Here, I felt I was at home. I enjoyed my time. My Myself sitting at the fire, going downtown for a cup of coffee with a, another legal friend of mine. I'd be forever in her debt because she has lifted me, literally lifted me out of the gutter. We moved into the old dairy, and that was the first corn there. Money, of course, is still the big problem. Except Sister Concilio has a permanent saying, Our Lady will provide. I didn't feel I was taking chances when I did things, like going out and buying a farm when the place was gone too small for us and we had to get out of the way anyway. Like what? You, you just trusted? You, you blind trust in Our Lady and you go out and buy a farm? Blind trust in Our Lady. We bought every place in that trust. She believes that to create a family hub will allow a person to rebuild themselves from scratch. So the spirituality aspect of it is that she has created in all of these houses homes that people um, that are fractured, that they can come and rebuild themselves. I fell down the road at the age of 12, a bad road, and it just got gradually worse and worse and worse until I didn't want to live anymore. I was actually overdosing on drugs and alcohol, wanting to die, and didn't want to wake up in the morning. And somebody must have been looking after me up, up there because I shouldn't be alive today. I see people, precious people, or for one reason or another, are using that stuff to kill the pain of living. I tried to take my own life twice or three times. That's why I ended up in St. Pat's, because I just couldn't take it anymore. And I was scared to tell anybody. Sister Concilio noticed me. She was walking with her dog. Her dog barked at me, as he does. She said she held my hand, and she looked straight in my eye, and she put her arm around me, and she said, it'll be OK, you're in the right place now. 
She holds you when she shakes your hand. That's another really unusual thing. She has no problem with that grasp, with that human contact. So there's a love there that she came to this world with. It's a compassion. What happens in our lives when we are living from the negative? This morning, we'll have a look at where you came from. Uh, who would like to share? So when a fella comes to the gate and he's looking for help and he's hit rock bottom and he's ruined his family life, he's ruined his life, and you see this goodness in him, nobody else does. He doesn't even see it in himself. Well, it's like this. For me to welcome anyone through the door, it's the very same as welcoming Jesus Christ himself. Same thing. That's what he said. As long as you did to one of these, the least of my brothers you're doing it to me, sure this is a golden opportunity. I find it easier to see him in that person than I do when I go to Holy Communion. What was your secret? They helped each other. And it is really the secret today, in groups, working together and everything. When people help each other, they're giving away their best. The thesis in this place is there is good in everybody and let it come out. They give you back the sense of your own self-worth. That's the best way to put it. I've seen young people change in a matter of two weeks, building a wall. They have found a purpose in life. They have found that they're much, much more than they ever thought they were. I'm going to break our trade, you know, and I love coming here and getting stuck into things and bits and bobs like that, you know. I found it therapeutic when I came here. Like I sort of, sort of like I thought I was a waste of space, there was nothing left in my life. And now I'm starting to build myself back up, doing it for my partner as well. Like I'm just getting out here so I can live a decent life, basically, you know. It's great to be able to tell people you're special, you're beyond price, you're precious, because you're telling the truth. It's giving me my confidence back as well, you know, and it was great, like, when I finished the programme here to be able to stay on, they asked me to stay on and to help the lads, like, building the wall and doing the stonework and stuff here, like, you know, and showing them what to do. I got great satisfaction out of, out of doing that. And I suppose even being told that you're good as well, you know, because that wouldn't have been happened to me in a long, long time. I suppose somewhere along the line, I got the grace to see just a glimmer of the value of a human being. And our outside covers doesn't matter. It's who we really are, who you are, who I am. And actually, I was putting some of their names in the Garden of Remembrance, and I just cried bitter tears after the whole lot of them. Yeah. You know, we were so close to each other, it was amazing, it was amazing. But that's what life's about, loving one another, I think. Okay. With all our flaws and failings and every blessed thing. I'm, I'm only week 11 now, or 10. On to week 11, and I'm accepting. I'm accepting that, like, where I've been and where I'm at now. And like, it is good to wake up in the mornings and have your shave and do your thing. And just, just the small little things and not be, not be doing, like, not, not have a headache or have a hangover or things like that, you know? Just, just to wake up and just be, be happy and get, get on with your day, be normal. What people still need most who are in addiction is to see their own goodness, to love themselves. It's a healing power. The healing power of love is enormous. I hid it myself from a child, and Sister Concilio for me has been the only person in my life that has shown me that unconditional love, as in no expectations. Not, you know, has no expectations at all. She just loves me as I am. And I suppose that gave me the strength and the courage to start to love myself again. It's so important that we support each other. Mm -hmm. And that you get support from all the others in the aftercare. Because um, when you go out there, 
you know, after being here for so long, it's very often more difficult than you're anticipating. Love, you know, loving one another, seeing what's best in each other, and calling forth what is best in each other. And how do you do that? You see it in the person, and you help them. And that's what makes them well. And they discover all that goodness inside them they never dreamt was there. <laughs> Are you shouting for Kerry tomorrow, sister? Pardon? Are you shouting for Kerry tomorrow? You can be sure I am. Uh, I can carry myself, you know. <laughs> I can carry as well. I'm part of it. All to learn. Yeah. The mass was very special today. Yeah, it was. Her faith is. It's unmovable. It's very, very difficult to say no to her in any way. And it's probably because she feels like she is a vessel for Mary, Our Lady, and that anything that she wants, if it's for the greater good of the people that she's doing it for, it will happen. Hail Mary, for of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The things that constantly happen couldn't be happening. People wouldn't be getting well. We wouldn't have the dinner on the table. The money wouldn't come, but she wouldn't prompt the people to send it to us. If she, if, if she didn't, we wouldn't have it. But that's people, it's charity. People see the good work you do and decide to give you charity. It's not Our Lady. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I don't be telling people about Our Lady, I just tell them what she did for me. We get residents here from every walk of life. When something is happening, a builder could come in. If we've no chef, a chef will appear. You've no idea. Just when we need people, they appear. You know, spirituality can be sitting, you know, alone for two minutes in your own thoughts. It doesn't have to be God, Jesus, Mary or anybody else. But because this works for her in this way and because she has done, like, you know, she fixes two and a half thousand people a year over a 50 year period. How would you question that? You'd have to be inspired by it. So it's very interesting to see 50 years later that they still have rosary at 8 o'clock. They still have meditation at a certain time and mass at a certain time. And there's many different denominations come in here to actually get help. But they go along with it because they need the routine, the structure, and because it's ultimately a really good thing. There's nothing bad in anything that's happening here. But the routine and the discipline and the home is what fixes people. At the time, I was like, what's going on? Was, you know, I was like, oh, what's happening, you know? But it's, at the fact of it is, you just you say a prayer and you actually do find that thing, like, you, you actually start praying. I still pray every night now, I'm is when I go before I go to bed, and I'm on and I'm praying, and I'm praying to God, and I'm, like, I found him, like, I think I found God, like, and I, I do love it, like. Happiness, joy, peace, love, goodness, giftedness, beauty, everything that is wonderful is deep within us. We're not going to find it in our heads. I'm here up so limited. So limited like. Most people coming in here are living from their heads. I met a man over yesterday in the yard and I put my hand on his head and it was lighting, roasting. He was in distress. He was, didn't know what to do or where to turn or how to go. I said to him, we'll say a prayer. He said, they don't have much to do with praying or any of that stuff. I said, that doesn't make any difference. You're just loved as much by the Lord, by Our Lady. So just calm down and do your best to come away from your head. Because I said, you have this place and you can experience it. If you're willing to go there, down from your deeper inner self. You said, you need prayer. 
and we made the movie. You know, I can, I can, well, I'm used to saying it because I have to. And my head is fast. I can't afford to go there. And I just do this with my hands because it helps me to come away, to come down. But in, I'd said three or four minutes. He had experience, like when he left his head, I said, come away from here and we'll go down to that deeper, better place and let yourself feel it. You can feel it even if you're sitting here now. Can you feel that is a better place? She's an angel. She's a saint. She's she, she's helped me. And even when I was I was I wanted to leave last week, and I was trying to get my partner on a phone call, and she sent me down. She goes, "Yeah, thinking up here." She goes, "We moved down here," and she gave me a big hug, and I felt real. It warmed me. So I mean, I didn't want to go then. You know, I was happy enough for you. You know that kind of way. This place makes us good, sister, you know? When the air goes, it just takes us to discover it. And sister, without you, we wouldn't have this place. But I can't explain to you how important it is to be vigilant, to watch, because it's so easy to, you know, to go down the wrong road. Mm, yeah. You have to be somewhere. You still have more to do. Should we're only beginning, like. But you're not going to live forever. I'm not going to live forever. I could be dead in the morning. How is Coonwara going to survive without you? We're in the process of putting people together who will make a commitment to Coonwara. And there'll be various strands of commitment. But I'd hope that in every house there'll be at least two people who wouldn't have anything else to think about, who would be totally committed. I don't believe that God stopped giving out vocations. I don't believe that for a moment, because if he loved me and he could love anyone in. But maybe vocations aren't about people joining convents or giving their lives to the church in the traditional sense. Sisters, as soon as Mary Summers, I'll tell you when to go. I'll tell you. I think she needs a core group of people that believe like she believes. The spirituality aspect of it is vital. It needs to have that magic and that love for people. It's not really about having the best manager. It's about that spiritual, compassionate love. This un, you know, it, it's an unrequited love of humanity. That's, so where is she going to find these people? Well, she believes, fundamentally believes that they will she will find those people who will commit their lives, consecrate their lives to mm. Our Lady and Our Lord the way she did. Mm. And you're wondering, is she living in Cloud Cuckoo Land? Mm. I don't believe she is. I believe she will find those people. And actually, I believe that they will actually just come to her. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to, in any way I can, Carry on, Kinvera. You know, the same way Sister Concilio has did it this past 50 years. To present symbols as a reminder that we are all one big family, working together under the guidance of Sister Concilio. I want to give my life to Kinvera, as in my whole self, being there for the other person, not being there for myself. Always looking at that other, that other person who walks through Convera's doors, who keeps me grounded, who helps me as much as I'm going to help them. We would like to congratulate Sister Concilio on the 50th anniversary celebrations of Coonmore. We are exceptionally blessed and fortunate to celebrate this milestone with you. We would like to present you with this plaque and express our sincere gratitude for the support and compassion that Kun Murray has brought to our lives and the lives of our families. Thank you. The convent wasn't really for her, it was just this very strong calling, but very quickly realised when she became friends with these men um, who loved her instantly, they were now her family and that just grew and grew and grew. I went into the convent thinking I was leaving everything behind me. But I got surprised because 
desert since I went there, that everything was there for me. I never regretted joining the nuns, and I'm glad I did. And I'm glad I got all the opportunities I got. And I'd, I mean, I would do it all, all over again. They looked after me, and I looked after them. There's loads of love for everyone, and there's loads of scope for loving people. And just to have to concentrate on just one family and one man and one thing, um, I, that's what I wasn't cut out for it. It would only torture him. Looking you know, where was I gone?